Genesis 45, we'll deal with uh, verse 1 through 8, but just for our text tonight, we want to deal with verses uh, 3 through 5. Amen. It says, And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him. Watch this. His brother, brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. My God, I thought we got rid of Joseph. What? And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. Oh, my God, this gets really good. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Somebody say sold into Egypt. Sold into <laughs> Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. Hmm. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Yesterday morning, I think it may have been yesterday morning, and me and my wife, we were talking, and as I was meditating, and uh, I was reading this particular passage, and it just jumped out at me, especially in verse uh, number uh, four. He said, and Joseph said unto his brethren, come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold hmm. into Egypt. Don't be grieved. Don't worry about it. For God did send me, and send me just jumped out in my spirit. God did send me before you to preserve life. And so that's what we want to teach on tonight from a subject we're dealing with. I really believe it will bless you. Sold yet sent. And that's what I want to mm. talk about tonight. Sold yet sent. We'll see exactly what that means. As we study. So let's pray, Father. Thank you. We bless you. We give you praise for this opportunity. I thank you for everyone in the sound of my voice. God, I thank you that you're releasing fresh anointing, burden removing, yoke destroying power right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that revelation knowledge will flow freely right now. I pray that you prepare the hearts of your people. I declare this is good soil tonight, and the seed of this word will fall on good soil and will repent would produce a hundredfold return. And we thank you right now that our lives are truly changed by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. And we give you praise on credit for what you're going to do, how you're going to move, what you're going to say in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, uh, I like to do introductions to kind of lead into what we're talking about. And uh, there's a lot going on in society, but I do believe by the aid of the Holy Spirit, we'll get a better understanding and we can stay focused, we can stay balanced and really hear what God is saying because there are a lot of voices out there right now. Mm -hmm. People are confused as to, well, what is God really saying? Because some, some people say God is saying this, another group says God is saying this, somebody else. One preacher says God is saying this, another preacher says God is saying this. So we mm -hmm. want to know what the true and the living God is saying in this hour. And so one of the most uh, bittersweet things that uh, many believers find hard to accept about God, the Father, is how he allows tragedies and, and uh, painful events to occur in our lives that we feel he should have prevented. How many of you ever thought, God, now you could have done something about this particular situation? Right. It's like I'm going through this. I, I experienced this heartbreak unnecessarily. God, why did you allow this particular thing to happen? You know, it wasn't my fault technically. You know, so why did you allow this particular tragedy? Why did you allow this? Why did you allow this, per allow this person to do this, that, and the other to me? And so many times we feel like if God is God, he should have prevented some things from happening in our lives. And and when we think about that, even in uh, the Gospel of John chapter 11, Martha, she felt the same way. She said, uh, you know, now the scenario is Lazarus had been dead for four days. Jesus received word, but he still waited two days before he actually went to where they were. And then he finally gets there and Martha meets him. 
and she says these famous words, Lord, if you had been here, <laughs> right. then my brother would not have died. I'm confident in you. I know you're a healer. I know you're a deliverer. If you would have gotten here in time, then my, my brother would not have died. I know you would have healed him. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we would not have to be experiencing uh, this bereavement this morning, this bereavement pain right now if you have would have gotten here when we thought you should have come. Right. So think about that. So so but they didn't know that Jesus had already pre planned to raise Lazarus from the dead and to teach them the fact that he is the so that's something we have to understand. Even if seemingly catastrophic events happen in our lives, God is always thinking ahead of us. And he always has our best interests at heart. And he's always teaching us something about his I amness. So mm -hmm. that's the uh, vein we'll be speaking on tonight. And uh, but not only Martha had a situation. We're going to meet somebody here in a minute. Not only did... Uh, Martha have a situation, but the prophet Habakkuk was feeling some type of way <laughs> about some stuff that was going on in his day. You know, Habakkuk was witnessing the same exact scenarios that we're experiencing here in our contemporary time. You know, he was witnessing all of the injustices that were occurring against God's chosen people at that time. And and Habakkuk said this, if you look at uh, chapter one in detail, mm -hmm. in essence, he said these five things. He said, Lord, I'm crying out to you for help, but you will not hear me. I don't know what's going on. I know you're powerful. I know you're omniscient. I know, I know you're omnipresent. I know you're everywhere at the same time. I know you have all power in your hand, and I'm crying out to you on behalf of my people but you will not hear what's going on. And he says to God, I, I'm, I'm telling you violence is in the land. I'm telling you what's going down here. You know, I'm your prophet, you know. I'm telling you what's going down here on earth and violence is in the land. Mm -hmm. Yet you do not say. I, I, I don't understand it. I don't know what's going on. He says, I, I, I'm witnessing uh, destruction and violence. Doesn't sound like... Uh, Prophet Habakkuk is right here in our face, just yep. looking at the news, just yep. looking at everything that transpired in mm -hmm. 2020. You understand? So he says, I'm witnessing destruction. I'm experiencing, uh, we're witnessing a violence right before my eyes. And not only that, Father, strife continues and contention arises. Then he says, not only this, Father, but the laws of the land are ineffective. And justice is never up there. Doesn't that sound like 2021? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say, the, the, the wicked surround the righteous, and justice is perverted. And then God responds in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. He says, look at the nations. I'm paraphrasing. He says, see. He says, be astonished and wonder, for I am doing something. My wife already said it. I'm I'm doing something in your days. You may not see it with the naked eye. You may not know exactly. You may not see what I'm doing, but trust me, I am doing mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And it's so fabulous, you would not mm -hmm. believe it, even if, I told you. even if I took the time to tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, so sometimes it's hard to, uh, quote, unquote, figure God out. You understand what I'm saying? And then, so, in most cases, when we think about this uh, reality here, in most cases, it's a waste of time for God to try to explain to us mm -hmm. what he's doing and why he's allowing things to happen as they're happening uh, at the time that we are experiencing tragedies and painful realities in our lives. And, you know, many of you can attest to this. Uh, there's something about the sovereignty of God that we wish that we could some kind of way manipulate <laughs> and cause things to occur as we think that they should go. Right. You know right. <laughs> However, 
when the finite, and listen to me carefully, when the finite tries to rewrite the infinite's story. Come on now. The end may not manifest glory, but more gory. Let me say that again. If the finite tries to rewrite the infinite's story, which is God, mm -hmm. the end may not manifest glory, but more gory. It ain't going to manifest glory. That's right. You know, you often hear people say, you know, you see my glory, but you don't know my glory. <laughs> you don't know what I've been through to get to where I am. You know, you see the bling bling now. You see prosperity now, but you don't, you weren't there. When I, I didn't have two nickels to rub together, you understand? So, so in the natural, you know, we can't really fathom how God could possibly get any glory out of some of the things that have happened in our lives. And even in this country right now, you know, yet in times like these in our lives, I think about the question that uh, the Apostle Paul raised in, you know, Romans chapter 11, verse 34. He said these powerful words for who hath known the mind of, the mind of the Lord mm. or who hath been his, his counsel, counsel. Right. <laughs> you know and then another scripture in uh, I think it's Isaiah chapter 55 talks about for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are my ways your ways said the Lord then he goes on to say as high as the heavens are mm. above the earth mm -hmm. so are my ways higher mm -hmm. Then your ways, my thoughts, your thoughts. So when you think about that, you know, it kind of makes you wonder, hmm, do I really know God like the back of my hand? <laughs> you know, another scripture says in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, it says the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things that are revealed, they are ours. So think about this in the context of what I just uh, foundation I just laid and I want you to think on this in the spirit the very evil thing that we thought should have never happened could be the very thing that God meant for good not turn it around for good I'm never understand there's a distinction between or there's a difference between God meaning something and God turning something around oh, right. for his good and we're going to see tonight in our closing scripture that God meant for Joseph to go through some things. So you think about uh, Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 28, you know. For we know that all things. What? For we know that all things. How many things? All the things. Hold on. Now, it seems like that, that, that. Did the Holy Spirit make a mistake right there? <laughs> As Paul says, and we know that all things work together for good for who for those who love god and for those who are the called according to his purpose amen so that's a powerful reality so however the truth of the matter is that many times we don't know at the time because we have no clue as to god's purposes ahead of time <laughs> Right. Before we experience the things that hurt us or have hurt us, you understand. So, mm -hmm. so look at the phrase um, "ahead of time." <laughs> ahead of time, before time. Mm -hmm. So, before time, we have to understand there was eternity. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, before there was time, there was eternity. So we know that God is an eternal mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. So in eternity, God discussed time with, with himself. himself. Right. The Father, the Word, which is the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So God discussed time with himself. Therefore, there's some things that will occur in time mm -hmm. that only eternity past knows the beginning and the end of. Right. Everybody see that? Let me say that again. That, that was heaven. There's some things that will occur in time, in our time, in our lifetime, that only eternity past knows the beginning, the beginning and the yeah. ending of. And I love the scripture, uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18. Write that down if you're taking notes. Proverbial writer says, 
for surely there is an end. Right. <laughs> and thine expectation shall not be cut off. So you have to understand, surely there is an end. So in other words, when you think about an end, you think about guaranteed manifestation. Yeah. With a deal. God doesn't start anything that he doesn't finish. Mm -hmm. You know, you even look at in the book of Revelation, it talks about, he says, for I am Alpha and Omega, mm -hmm. the beginning and the ending, which was and is and is to come, the Almighty. So everybody see that? So, mm -hmm. so God has the ending at mind in mind when he starts at the beginning. So you'll never see God half doing anything. He's yeah, a see, very meticulous yeah, God. Detailed. The scripture, let me give you some Bible on that. It says that he knows the number of hairs that are on our head. That's right. And I'm bald headed right now. So he, he knows which ones I shaved off. That's how deep God is. Yeah. You know, even the Bible says that, uh, you know, in Psalm 103, I think verse 12, it talks about how as far as the east end is, David said, as far as the east is from the west, so as he removed our transgressions. Mm -hmm. And I happened to, uh, I just, you know, I was inquisitive just to look at the symbolism of it. And I looked up, looked on the world, this was just the other day, and uh, tweeted from, I just looked at the, uh, in Japan, so Japan would be far east. Mm -hmm. And I said, let me see how far, if I traveled west to Morocco, how many miles would that be? Right. And then I say, wow, let me see how many miles it would be from Morocco to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. And so from 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 uh, Japan to Morocco is approximately 7,226 miles. Wow. And from Morocco to Los Angeles is 6,053 miles. So it's a total of 13,279 miles. Mm. So when the Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, so have he removed our transgressions. He wanted to remove them so far so we wouldn't have time to go back and get them and put them back in our lives. Mm -hmm. Somebody need to get that and run with it. So I'm just showing you how meticulous and how detailed God is. Amen. So let's look at this tonight. Uh, and I want you to get this in your spirit. Only God knows your soul equals his sin. <laughs> and we're going to see what that means tonight. See, only God knows that your soul equals his sin. Yeah, that's good. So let me give you some background leading up to Genesis chapter 45. I'm going to have my wife do a read that for me. Uh, verses 30, chapter 37, verses uh, 3 through Eight. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Mm. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could mm. not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told his brethren and they hated him yet the more. And, and he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamt. Mm -hmm. Now look at what he says now. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose, and all so stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obscience to my sheep. <laughs> and his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? <laughs> or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? Mm. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Now, three different times you see, he started off hating him because his dad loved Joseph more than he did the other ones. Now, this is not talking about Benjamin because you know that you know the story about Jacob. He had worked seven years for uh, Rachel, and then Laban ended up giving him Leah, and then he had a couple of babies by Leah, then had a couple of babies by his con Leah's concubine 
I mean, uh, Neat, uh, Leah's handmaiden. And so, you know, uh, Joseph, I mean, not Joseph, but, uh, Jacob had, uh, like four, four different baby mamas. You understand? <laughs> and of course, Rachel was the one he really loved, but he still kept having babies by Leah, you know? And so, uh, long story short, he ended up with a total of 12 sons. And so Joseph was the eleventh son, and Benjamin was the last son. So uh, Joseph and Benjamin came on, came along in Jacob's old age. So he had a special affection for uh, Joseph, and so the brothers knew it. You know, and I mean, enough you know, you know, if you you have a situation similar to that, you know, sometimes uh, you know your dad prefers one set of kids over another set of kids and that can that can uh, kind of produce yeah, some mixed emotions you understand yeah, especially uh -huh. if dad that dad is spending more time with this particular uh set of kids and then you know providing more for them than he is for you know this set of kids uh -huh. and so you know that can get real ugly you understand uh -huh. Uh -huh. and so they developed a hatred for Joseph because they knew how much that Jacob or Israel loved Joseph. Right. So everybody see that. So mm -hmm. so in regards to hatred, I understand this tonight because we're going we're going to get us to some deep revelation tonight. Now in regards to hatred, now based on finite comprehension, there couldn't be anything positive that results from negative hatred. <laughs> you know that that's what the average mindset would think concerning hatred. You know. However, based on infinite comprehension, negative hatred, watch this, could be the fuel to get you sold so that you can have transportation to your place of dream fulfillment and destiny. That's good. That's heavy. Do I need to say that again? Based on infinite comprehension, negative hatred could be the very fuel to get you sold so that you can have transportation to your place of dream fulfillment slash destiny. Now that's heavy. See, Joseph, once again, Joseph's brothers hated him because, number one, their father loved Joseph more than them, and they knew it. You know, Joseph, you know, uh, Jacob had a special uh, coat of many colors for Joseph. You understand? And, and so the second thing is the hate intensified after Joseph told them his dream. Huh, that's gonna go bad, really bad. Dream haters. Then it escalated even more. Mm -hmm. Richard did after they realized the interpretation of the dream. And one translation from the Amplified says that the words symbolize that he arrogantly said it to his brothers. <laughs> you know, ideas when you know somebody can't stand you then you get a dream from the Lord or you get a word from the Lord. And so, you know, a lot of people don't teach on this, but it was like, you know, hey, you hating on me now, but y'all going to be bowing down. I don't know how long from now. That's right. Y'all dogging me out. Y'all mistreat me, you know, because you know they were mistreating him because in the earlier text in chapter 37, it talked about how, you know, the his brothers were acting crazy, and he went back and gave Jacob the report. Mm -hmm. So they were dogging him out. And so you know when somebody ain't feeling you. You know when somebody don't care for you. You know when somebody don't love you. And so, so though Joseph was young, he wasn't stupid. He knew his brothers didn't care for him. So when he got this dream from the Lord, he was like, what? Let me tell y'all what the Lord just showed me. Right, <laughs> yes. right. God just showed me. Since y'all hating on me and y'all right. mistreating me and dogging right. me out. Right. You know, treating me like a scrub. Mm -hmm. Look at what God showed me. And so so when you think about that, so so their hatred escalated the more after they realized because they, they interpreted the dream themselves. They see. Are you go are we going to serve right, you? Right, right, right. Are, are you, you crazy? crazy? You know what I'm right. <laughs> exactly. So think about this, people of God. It, it it's hard to fathom that escalated hatred 
was the sovereign tool to create the momentum to get Joseph to his place of destiny. So that was on purpose. <laughs> you know, so God has some funny ways Man. of getting himself some glory. You understand? Man. And then don't sit there and try to figure it out because you, you, you'll blow a fuse. Right. You just have to accept this about God's sovereign. You know, years ago, uh, what's the name? Barry Coley sung a song about sovereign, you know, sovereign. The Lord our God is sovereign. He can do what he wants to do, when he wants to, and how he wants to. Because he's sovereign. Yes. God is God. And I love the verse. You say, who am I to question God's judgment? Who am I to question Mm-hmm. His wisdom. Mm-hmm. Who am I to be offended by his ways or what he allows to be? And then he goes on to say, I must realize Come on now. that God is soft. Mm-hmm. Amen, somebody. So, so though, listen at this now. Though the brethren's initial plot was to kill Joseph, God's plot was to use the hatred as a means of transportation. <laughs> that was his ride right there. Let me give you a revelation here. See, they couldn't kill Joseph because it wasn't in God's script. Right. Write that down if mm-hmm. you're taking notes. Mm-hmm. They plotted to, but they could not kill Joseph because it wasn't in God's script. Watch this now. There are some things that it appears that God's hand is nowhere in it. Come on now. However, God is Lord over hatred too. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And can use it for his sovereign purposes. Now, let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 37, verses 18 through 27, deal with the actual conspiracy to kill Joseph. But I want to... Uh, just highlight one or two verses, the verse that uh, Reuben spoke out. So let me just give you the uh, backdrop. The brothers, they were discussing, they say, okay, uh, when he comes near, what we'll do, we'll just, uh, we'll grab him and we'll throw him in the pit. No, no, no. See, we, we, we'll just kill him, but they, and Reuben say, no, man, we can't kill him. Right. We can't, we can't do that, man. I got to go back to Jacob, man, and and, and I can't face Jacob if, if, knowing that we've killed the son that he loves the most. So, love so, so, just, just uh, throw him in a pit. Let's, let's, don't, 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 don't lay a hand on him. Look at what it says. So, so, who do you think touched Reuben's heart to say, oh, "Shed no blood," God did. but cast him into this pit uh-huh. that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him? I thought they hated Joseph. I thought they wanted to kill him. But Reuben says, shed no blood. Let's do this. Let's cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon it. Hmm. Not all only that, then then, then, uh, Reuben goes about his business. And so uh, they throw him into the pit. And uh, they start eating lunch. This is how much they hated Joseph. Now, how you throw somebody in a pit and, then, and go eat lunch? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this your blood brother. <laughs> they throw him into a pit. They hear him hollering. I imagine he was out. Let me out. Let me out. You know what I'm saying? Joseph's 17 years old. That'll be just like me two years ago throwing Tasia in a pit. And then go to McDonald's and, and, and get me a you know, a, a quarter pound a meal. Like I didn't, I haven't heartless. done anything. Heartless. Heartless. Just heartless. Mm-hmm. They throw them in a pit. They start eating lunch. And then Judah speaks out. Judah's name means praise, right? Uh-huh. Praise. So who do you think touched Judah's heart to say, man, what profit is it if we slay our brother? And conceal his blood. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Mm -hmm. And let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh. 
Right. Now, I want to go deeper in this, and I want you to get a better understanding of this. Consider the hand of God amidst hateful brothers. Hmm. Now, we just read the text clearly revealed that oh. Joseph's brothers literally hated him. My wife just read that in Genesis chapter 37. His brothers literally hated him and couldn't even speak to him on friendly terms. That's what peaceably means. Friendly terms. Wow. They couldn't even speak to him. They, 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 you know how it is? You just can't stand somebody. Well, I hope you don't. You, no, you ain't to that point. No, no. Yeah, you know, no, but, but, but no. you, you may have seen others who can't stand a person. It's like they start boiling. They, the pressure just gets high. When they stand by a person because they just can't stand that particular person. So the text reveals that Joseph's brothers literally hated him. Hmm. So how did mercy get in the hearts of hateful brothers? Come on now. How? <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody confirm and reaffirm that God is sovereign. Now, mm -hmm. how did mercy get in the hearts of hateful brothers? who were actually plotting to kill him, then they changed their mind. Mm. Think about this now. Now the text revealed that all the brothers involved unanimously agreed not to kill him. Right. Now, I don't believe that uh, Benjamin was there. These are the older brothers that we're talking about. So they unanimously agreed not to kill him but throw him in the pit. Yeah. And then they minus Reuben, because remember, Reuben left. Because if you read the whole text in its entirety, Reuben came back after they had sold uh, Joseph to the, Is to the Ishmaelites, and he didn't see Joseph in the pit. And he just rent his clothes. He just went hysterical. He oh my God. They went ahead and killed him anyway. I thought we agreed not to kill him. So he, he didn't know what had happened. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So so they agreed not to kill him, but to throw him in the pit. And then, of course, Jacob, not Jacob, but uh, Judah says, let's not kill him. Uh, let's go ahead and sell him to the Ishmaelites. Mm -hmm. They saw some Midianite merchants coming along with the Ishmaelites. Hey, let's go ahead and perfect time, and let's go ahead and sell Joseph for twenty pieces of silver. You know, Judas sold Jesus for thirty pieces, mm -hmm. and so the brothers sold J Joseph for twenty pieces of silver. Now, so they unanimously agreed to sell him to the Ishmaelites. So they went from killing him. To throw him, let's agree to throw him in a pit. Now him. let's get him out of the pit. Let's sell him. We unanimously agree to sell him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. Now I want you to understand how sovereign God is. Answer this question. Read that for me, sweetie. The text clearly reveals. Question. question. Do you think that they would have sold Joseph if they knew? That they were making arrangements for the brother whom they hated to get the, to the location of the fulfillment of his dreams? No. That's my answer. No. Do you think they would have sold Joseph if they knew that they were making arrangements for the brother whom they hated to get to the location of the fulfillment of his dream? Mm -hmm. Now that's heavy there. It is. We're going somewhere. So let's look at this. Uh wanna make sure I didn't uh make sure I got everything out of that. All right. Now let's go on to uh the main text. Genesis chapter 45, verses one through eight. I hope you're getting something out of this tonight. Yes, yes. It says, Then Joseph could not refrain himself. So let me give you uh the scenario here. This is the second year into the famine. Remember, Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream, and he said there would be seven years of plenty, 
and then there will be seven yeah, years so. of famine. Mm -hmm. So now they have experienced the second year of the famine, and there's still five more years to, more go. Years to go. So now Joseph's brethren, they are coming to Egypt to get provision during the famine. Uh -huh. Watch this now. Yeah. And so now they're standing before this man who's second in command in the whole country of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they need grain. They need food. They need sustenance to right. take back mm -hmm. to their families. So now they're before Joseph who's second in command. It says, then Joseph could not, re well, jo Joseph recognized them before they knew who he was. Right. It says that Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. So Joseph just broke down and he cried. Calls every, he said, look, calls every man to uh, go out from me, please, please. Just get away from me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm messed up right now. Mm -hmm. and, and there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brother. And he wept aloud. So, you know, Joseph was weeping profusely. Yeah. Oh, man. He was like, oh, man. After 22 years, my brothers, I can imagine, oh, my God. This is the vision coming to pass. He sees his brothers before him, and he weeps aloud. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. So he had to be crying really hard for the Egyptians to hear him after they, after he put them out the room. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so it says, and Joseph said unto his brother, brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? Is dad still alive? And his brethren could not answer him with this, for they were troubled at his presence. Mm -hmm. What? I know we sold you in slavery, but I, I thought you would be dead by now. Right, right. What? You living and you sucking in command in Egypt? Oh, my God. Where, where the food is. Oh, my God. You got the authority to wipe us out right now. And so they were like, they were troubled at his presence. <laughs> Joseph said unto his brother, and watch this now, come, come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, he said, look, I'm Joseph, your brother. Watch this now, whom ye sold into Egypt. I'm your brother whom you sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. My God, somebody needs to get that and run mm -hmm. with it tonight. Look at what he says in verse 6. For these two years have the famine been in the land, mm -hmm. and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. Mm -hmm. So seed sown nor harvest. And God sent me, oh my God, now, God yes, sent God me, sent me. Yes. before you to preserve, preserve you, That's right. a posterity in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Mm -hmm. So now he's making it perfectly clear, people of God, it was not you that sent me hither. Right, right. Don't, don't, don't. I forgive you, I forgive you. But God. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on now, you sold me, but God sent me. Right. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and Lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Look at the sovereignty of God. Now, now understand this just to give you some context. Joseph was 17 when they threw him in the pit, took him out, sold him into slavery, right? So he was 17 years of age. Now he is 39 years of age. And the dream is now in real time. <laughs> now he was 30 
when he started his reign in Egypt. Uh -huh. So seven years of plenty had passed, and now they were in the second year of the famine, famine and had five more years to go before the famine was over. Mm -hmm. So he was 39 years old when what God showed him 22 years ago Ooh, came to, somebody. oh my God, somebody need to get yes, that. To somebody. Yes, sir. Now, what if God showed you a dream in 1998 and now you live in your dream in 2021? Yeah. Or you started living your dream in 2020? This is the extent of what I'm sharing with you tonight. So think about this. 22 years later, hmm. what God showed Joseph, he's now living it. Now keep in mind, he started reigning when he was 30. Mm -hmm. But the word of the Lord was that his brothers were going to bow down to him and in and, and, and respect and reverence. Right, right, right. Right? right? So let me give you some revelations here. So you want to say anything? No, this is good. Taking notes. So let me give you some revelations on being sold equals being sent. <laughs> and I hope you can apply this to your life. The location where Joseph would be when the dream came to pass wasn't revealed to Joseph in the dream. Hmm. He simply saw his brother's Bowing down to him in respect. Obedience means honor and respect. And the end. Everybody see that? So God don't always show you the in-betweens. He shows you the end. Uh -huh. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So Joseph knew that his brothers hated him. Mm -hmm. That's why he shared the dream with them. To let them know, you dogging me out right now. But you will need me. One day. Yeah, one day you will need me. You're going to respect me. Mm -hmm. So that's why he shared the dream. Now, however, the text doesn't reveal that he hated them in return. It just says they hated him. So neither Joseph nor his brothers knew that God was using their hatred. This is deep. To initiate a one-way ticket to Egypt in order to ultimately preserve their lives 22 years later. Oh my God, somebody need to get that. Some of you on this call tonight, you got some haters and you need to understand it ain't worth it to be hating. It is amazing how God has you blessing your haters on his mind in the future while they are hating on you in your now. <laughs> what kind of God is that? He has you blessing the people hating on you now in the future mm -hmm. on his mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. That, 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 that's heavy to me. That's you right. understand? So let me uh, call to you parenthetically and uh, call you to have some reflections. I want you to think about some, some painful things that you've experienced that were not necessarily your fault. You were just being you. It had nothing to do with you. It wasn't your fault, but it happened. And you saw no legitimate reason why you had to experience them. Right. So you saw it as a type of being sold, but God sees it as being sent. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. See, <laughs> see, it's recorded that Jesus was asked by the disciples of, uh, question concerning a man who was born blind. And they asked him, you know, who sinned? Who sinned? Who sinned? To cause this man to be born blind. Mm -hmm. Jesus specifically said, no, no one, one sinned None of them. in this particular instance. This was exclusively for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. mm. There are some things that God has allowed and has meant that were exclusively for him to get glory out of your life. Mm -hmm. So so there have been some things that happened in our lives due to repercussions for wrong choices. Mm -hmm. But there are other things that God's sovereign hand orchestrated. Mm. So it may look 
may have looked like you were sold, but you were sent. <laughs> you may have, you, you know, don't, 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 don't look at it literally. Look at the revelation. Personalize it to what you went through and nobody understood how you felt about what you went through and, and, and how you felt wronged all of these years and you know, understand that though it happened and you didn't understand why it happened, God knew it would happen and he knew that he would use what happened for his glory in your life. Amen. Everybody see that? See, there are some things that you went through an experience that were exclusively for the glory of God. Amen. See, your misery will become your ministry. Like that. Write that down. Your misery will become your ministry or your service to humanity. Everybody see that? So you think about the, the, the analogy here to get the oil out of the olives, they have to be crushed. Everybody see that? So there's some anointing in you. And the only way to get it out of you is for you to be crushed so that oil can flow. Amen? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's our pain that becomes an indicator of our earthly assignment. Oh, no. Purpose in the pain. What pains you? What aches your heart? What do you want to see change so bad? That gives you an indicator of your That's earthly true. assignment. Right. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So the problem that infuriates you the most is your assignment to solve. My God. And most of the time it's directly, directly correlated with the pain that you experience in your life. Mm -hmm that interest now in genesis chapter 50 uh i thought this was uh fascinating it doesn't take much to fascinate me but it was something that joseph said in genesis chapter 50 and he said look you would think that after jacob died or israel died that and so the, the brothers actually thought this in actuality. They were like, okay, dad is dead now. We in uh, Goshen, we, we having a good time now, but, but dad is dead now. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that uh, Joseph is going to get vengeance on us and repay us for what we did to him. Mm -hmm. And then Look at how Joseph responded in Genesis chapter 50. He says, fear not. I think it's around verse 18. He says, fear not. For am I in the place of God? Now watch these words now. But as for me, ye thought evil, watch this now, now. Yes. against me. Uh -huh. You did what you did because you were full of hate towards me. You meant evil. You thought you would never have to see me again. But God meant it unto good. <laughs> Hold on now. How can something so traumatic, so traumatizing, so so such a tragedy, how could that being thrown in a pit, being hated by your brothers, how could God mean that not turn it around it was a bad situation and god just turned it around for good but you can't omit and ignore the word meant when you think about men you think about on purpose hmm. if you, you you know you somebody may have did something to you and you say you meant to do that what are you saying it was intentional. You understand what I'm saying? So you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good. To bring to pass at it as it is this day to save much people alive. Please get this tonight, brothers and sisters. Then he proceeded. Here's something so, so ironic. 
he comforted them and he spake kindly unto them. Same principle, I was telling my wife this, you know, when, when, when David was running from Saul for years, he had an opportunity to kill him. You know, Saul was in the cave to uh, take a leap. And, uh, you know, David's uh, servant said, man, this your opportunity right here. That's Saul. He take, yeah. He's taking a leap, man. You can kill him right now. He's been trying to kill you all of these years. Go ahead, wipe him out. You got a chance. Right. David said, no. I touch not God's anointing. So he just, you know, took his sword and, and, and brushed his a piece of his skirt off. Mm -hmm. Then he said, look, Saul, I could have killed you. I could have wiped you out. Mm -hmm. But I just did this to let you know I don't have nothing against you, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been trying to kill me all these years, but I had the opportunity, but I'm not going to touch God's anointing. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the same principle with uh, Joseph. You meant evil against me, mm -hmm. but, but I'm not seeking vengeance right, right, right. because I understand purpose is involved. I'm not saying it didn't hurt. I'm not saying that I agreed with being in the pit. I'm not saying I agreed with you selling me and I had to leave my daddy whom I love. He loved me. I loved him. I had to leave my dad. I had to leave my baby brother, uh, Benjamin. You know, it was whacked. It was messed up from the flow up. Mm -hmm. But because I had 22 years to deal with this stuff nice. and develop my character and develop my love for God so I understand purpose. Mm -hmm. That's why I got the revelation you meant evil. You thought evil. Right, right, right. But God meant it. So when you discover your purpose, write this down, and you see your dream come to pass, you don't have time to hold grudges. Right. Mm -hmm. when you understand that your hell was a part of God's plan to get you to your place of destiny you can't hate on who hated you <laughs> See, because purpose fulfillment supersedes hatred write that down if you're taking notes purpose fulfillment supersedes hatred okay. so let's look at Romans 8 28 in real time Paul said, and I think this is such a powerful verse, and we know that all things work together, together. for good. Mm -hmm. For those who love God mm -hmm. and are the called according to his purpose. And I'm thinking even as I'm speaking, and don't take this out of context, the scripture says that it pleased the Father to see his son through. Now, you can't misinterpret that as God is a sadomasochist and he just enjoyed his son going through pain, but he was so, it pleased him that his son was willing to, to go through it, yes. to lay down his life. See, yeah. the father didn't make Jesus lay down his life. He said, lo, thou prepare me a body, O God, to do thy will. He said, I go in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. So, so God didn't make him just like when you look, see the example of, uh, of, uh, Abraham and, uh, Isaac, you know, Isaac, he wasn't a little boy. Some scholars believe he was uh, about 25 years old. He willfully laid on that wow. altar. Wow. So Abraham didn't throw him down on the altar and then, and then tie him up and then and make him do it. Isaac willfully laid down. You understand? Mm -hmm. So so the Lord Jesus Christ willfully laid down his life, allowed himself to be whipped and put on a cross, nails in his hand, Ooh. nails in his feet. He yeah. willfully did that. Scripture even said no man... Take my life. I lay it down. I lay it down. That's right. You see that? So the word is telling us that 
all things work together for good. Now you would think, my point is, you would think that God would not have allowed his son. He said, this is my only begotten son. Mm -hmm. You know how tight Jesus and the father was. They were like two peas. You understand? That, that, that was the thing that I believe broke Jesus' heart more than anything. It wasn't the fact of having to be whipped. But I believe he thought about in that garden to the point that he sweat drops like blood. Right. He was in such deep meditation because he knew that once he became sin, he would be separated mm -hmm. from his father for the first time. Mm -hmm. So the thought of that hurt worse than a cat of nine tails on his Ooh. back, ripping and flaying his back like a plowed field, like a fish, like you scale of fish, you know, the thought of him being separated and becoming what his father hated and being separated, that traumatized him more than being whipped. So when you think about that, he willfully laid his life down. You understand? So if God would allow his son to go through all that heinous inhumane whipping and it pleased him that his son was willing to do it so you and I could be reconciled back to the father don't you think he'll allow you to go through some things yep. in order for you Absolutely. to do like his son did and say it is finished <laughs> see when we go through and lay our lives down in obedience to God's assignment. It brings God joy, and it brings the Father. It pleases the Father when we give him a yes, no matter what's going on in our lives. Everybody see that? So, so when you're experiencing your pain, it may not make sense. <laughs> That's right. But eventually, I, I gave you revelation on the word eventually. Event, you all why. So eventually, you will you all will understand why. Right. So when certain subsequent events take place, it will make sense why you had to go through like you went through. Mm -hmm. So God is sovereign, and, and, and he knew that he was sending Joseph as they were selling Joseph. Yeah. Oh my God, that's deep. I'm telling you. Oh my God. Different type of transaction. I hope you never see your life the same way after tonight. Yeah. Likewise, let me say to you in closing, I know my wife got something she wants to share. God knows your end mm -hmm. at the beginning of mm -hmm. your pain. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, somebody need to get that and run that's with it. That's good. That's good. Glory to God. So, my final scripture for you, Psalm 105, verse 19. This scripture is actually in reference to Joseph. It says, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Tried him. One translation says, tested him. Another translation said, refined him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can you imagine? Hold on now. I know what God showed me. Mm -hmm. I'm in slavery. Slavery, don't, my brothers ain't nowhere near me bowing down. What is this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He still, God favored him, so he still got promoted in Potiphar's house. Mm -hmm. His wife, Potiphar's wife, lied on him. He ends up in jail. My brothers ain't nowhere around. This it doesn't look it like ain't him. It ain't him. this ain't the dream. This ain't what God showed me now. But God is faithful. What God? Yes, Amen. So that word kept trying him. Until Still it came to pass. pass. So, family of God, I want you to get this in your spirit tonight. Sold yet sent.
And I wanted you to have a visual of this. Look at this first when He's sold into slavery. That's not him, but it's just an illustration mm -hmm. for the purpose. Mm -hmm. Now imagine Joseph being sold like this hmm. to the Ishmaelites mm -hmm. and they're headed to Egypt and the brothers didn't feel no kind of way about it because they were full of hate even mm -hmm. though they had mercy at the moment mm -hmm. and chose not to kill him. But look at the second picture. A ruler, a king. Charge. How do you go from being in chains or whatever they had them in to being sucking in command? He say, God has made me a father to Pharaoh. So, so Pharaoh trusts me with his life. Right. He doesn't have to worry about anything. I handle all his business for him. All he got to do is love on his family, man. I got everything in control in the country of Egypt. So how do you go from slavery to sucking in command unless God has his hand on you? <laughs> that's, that's, that's deep. That's, that's deep. Whew, I know you got something to say. But I, I, go ahead, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down and this, this <laughs> word is so deep. Right now, it's so much that I can say on it because I'm looking at Joseph being sold into slavery and he was in the pit. Yeah. And God promoted him to the palace and yes. he went to the prison. But God promoted him second in command to Pharaoh. It, it is this, you know, when you look at your life and you see what all that you've been through, yes. you question the process. God, I mean, I, I, I've been going through this. I've been feeling the same type of way for so long. But I love what you said, and it triggered something when you said that Joseph just saw the end of the game. Sometimes mm -hmm. God would just show us the end. But yes. We don't know all the details in between of what it's going to take for us to get there. And sometimes, yes. like God said to Habakkuk, what I'm going to do is going to be so great. If I tell you, you ain't going to believe it. You won't even if believe I tell you what you're going to become and how you're going to change and transform lives, you're not going to believe me. Yes. So I'm going to take you through the process. Because I don't want you to get big headed. I don't want you to, to lose focus. I don't want you to um uh you know become arrogant. I don't want you to become full of pride because I'm going to make you all of this in a bag of chips. How about I let you go through the process so you can learn integrity, so you can build character? Yes, yes, absolutely. And so when Joseph, and so all of that that Joseph went through preparing him for the day he was gonna meet his brother. Yes. It was because if God had given Joseph the details in between. Then he may have said, me? I ain't doing nothing for my brothers. I ain't doing nothing for them. They hate me. You see yeah. what they did to me, Lord? But because yeah. of all that Joseph experienced, the highs and the lows, and he, mm -hmm. and, and then I, I believe when he saw it, it made sense. Yes. It made sense to him that, hey, this is what the dream meant 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is what the dream meant. And so Joseph was able to come to himself and say, you meant evil against me. Yes. But God yes. allowed me to be sold so I can be sent to fulfill my purpose to save your life. Now that's something, boy. That's, that's deep. <laughs> that's deep. That, that's, that just put chills in my spine. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. God had on his mind, I'm sending you, but I got your hateful brothers on my mind too. To save them. In spite of <laughs> what they did to my you. God. But they were just following his plan. They were just the the, the 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 tools that God used to get Joseph to his purpose. Absolutely. And he couldn't have done the brothers. He just couldn't have gone to the cross without Judas. <laughs> yeah, that's deep. He needed so, Judas. So 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 even in the midst of everyone just focusing on twenty twenty one and all the Ways that God had planned for them to be great. Remember, your haters will be in the mix. Mm -hmm. But don't hate your haters. Love your haters because your haters are the ones that will get you to feel the pain to get to your purpose. Yes. See, Jesus' heart towards Judas never changed. He even told him, he said, go ahead, do what you, go ahead, do what you got to do. He even said it on one occasion. He said, I've chosen 
12 of you and, and one of you is a devil. Right. So I already know I so chose a devil. So he knew. But he said that, that the scriptures right. might be fulfilled. <laughs> right, right, right. I already knew Judas was a devil. And so even, and I say that to say, even when we look at what's going on in the country right now, God has a purpose. He, yes. he, he, he knows the beginning from the end. We don't understand all the in-between, but he knows the end. He knows what he wrote in his book. Yes. His story, which is the Bible. He knows what his story is. <laughs> and we may not be able to see it, but God knows it, and he's in total control. And we just got to trust him. Amen. Well, praise God. I hope you uh, got something out of this uh, lesson tonight. Uh, Lord, led me this way. Like I said, uh, the other morning, me and my wife were talking, and it just ignited something. I said, you sold me. But God sent me. Mm -mm -mm, <laughs> oh, my good. God. So I pray you never look at your struggles the same way after today. Everything you thought you felt justified for feeling the way that you feel, but go and pray and take a different look. Ask God to give you his perception on the ends. And I believe he wants to use the most hurtful thing, the thing that hurts you the most. Mm -hmm. He wants you to, he wants to use that to get you some glory out of your life. Mm -hmm. So understand, Joseph was sold, but being sold equals being sent. Right. In the eyes of God. Because God meant it unto good. God knew 22 years prior. He already knew in eternity past. That 22 years after the haters who sold him, they would need him. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And so the Pharaoh say, look here, man, uh, and I don't have time to deal with all the facets of it, but, but you know, when Joseph, uh, Pharaoh was so excited when he found out Joseph's brothers, what, these are your brothers, man? Oh, man, he, he gave them the best of the land. You know, of course, uh, Joseph hooked his youngest brother up, you know, gave him five, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> gave him five changes of clothes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, and he sent them back with food and say, man, take all this. You know, Pharaoh say, man, give them this, give them that, give them the other. Make sure they're taken care of while they're on the way back. You know, and go get dad and bring bring everybody back. We're going to put you in the land of Goshen. We're going to put you in the best land, best mm -hmm. part of the land. Mm -hmm. You my boy, you my boy, so abundance. I'm going to hook you and your abundance. family up. Abundance, yeah. During the midst of a family. Place of abundance. Place of abundance. During the midst of the pandemic. In the midst of a, a deadly virus. That's right. So Goshen is not just a literal location as it Mental was for, spiritual. for the people of God, but that's a place in the realm of the spirit mm -hmm. where God will provide no matter what's going on. Mm -hmm. So our time is up. I, I pray you got something out of this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know it was some, some deep stuff that came forth tonight, but we talked about... Uh, Staying on your wall in 2021. And so this coincides with that. Your assignment is so great. You're going to be helping haters. Hmm. But you had a love of God in your heart. Yes. That's just one of the revelations out of this. But stay on your wall. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're tapping into the pain deals with your purpose. Anything God allows is so he can be glorified. Mm -hmm. And those trials and those tribulations, they squeeze and crush you so the oil, the anointing can come flowing out of you. Mm -hmm. and you'll be able to minister to people and love on people. You know, and like they often say, you know, I don't look like what I've gone through. Right. You, you can go through the fire and come out not smelling like 